through, we got four problems to do. I'm going to do one and you're going to help me along with it. And then you're going to do one and then we'll switch back. So today, here's our first problem. It's got it labeled the top with a T. It's already balanced for us. We have our reactant amounts right here. We have what we have to find out, the limiting reactant. How do we know which one's going to be the excess reactant? Depends. Well, once we find the limiting reactant, is it easy to find the excess? Yeah, because it's the other one. Now, the last thing I need is the one of the products. How many products do I have? One. So we're going to find out, and our whole goal is to figure out how much of this, the product, can five moles of aluminum make and how much four moles of oxygen will make. Whichever one makes the least is the limiting reactant. All right, so let's start. Five moles of aluminum. So we start with moles. Can we make this problem really easy? Yeah. We can make it a mole to mole, right? Yeah. Now, what conversion factor is in every single stoichiometry problem? Hannah? The mole ratio. The mole ratio is in every single stoichiometry problem. You might want to put that in your brain. It might show up someplace tomorrow. All right. So we want to get rid of moles of aluminum. And we want to get to moles of <coughs> aluminum oxide. So in a mole to mole, all you need is the mole ratio. What's the mole ratio of aluminum oxide to aluminum? Two to four. Can we simplify that? One to two. What cancels? Moles of aluminum. All right. Now, here comes the hard part. Do not use a calculator for this. Five divided by two. Two point five. I should make a section of the test that no calculators. All right, so five moles of aluminum will make two and a half moles of aluminum oxide. Are we done yet? We have to do it again. Now this time we're going to start with the alumina or the oxygen. All right. So moles of aluminum oxide to moles of oxygen. All right, what's the ratio of aluminum oxide to uh, 2 to 3? We're not going to bother messing with that. So, what is 4 times 2 divided by 3? Don't use your calculator. 2.67. So, which one is our limiting reactant? The aluminum. Which one's the excess? Oxygen. So, once you know the limiting, you know which one's the excess. Oh, we didn't cancel out stuff. Nope, eliminate excess. 
Here is something that was asked. So that's our first step. Next up, the second part of the question says, how many grams of aluminum oxide do we expect? Now, does this really matter, these knowns right here? So where are we going to get what we need? Which one are we going to use? What, the 2.5, why? It's the limiting. So we're going to start with 2.5 moles of aluminum oxide. Now, how do we get that to grams of aluminum oxide? So I want to get rid of moles. Where does that go, top or bottom? <coughs> and I want to get to grams, so the obvious location is. What has the units of grams per mole? The molar mass. Now you can use your calculator of aluminum oxide. How many aluminums? 27 each. Somebody do that in your head. 54. How many oxygens? Three at 16, which is 48. And so that would be 102, correct? Yes. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. So, 2.5 times 102. 255. Is she correct? Yes, she is. So, that's as simple as it gets right there. <clears throat> so it's your job now as a table or an individual to do the and here we go maybe there we go okay here we go teacher example number two a Is this balanced? Somebody balance it for me. According to Kennedy, she says one, six, four. Is Kennedy correct? Yes, she is. So, we know what we have. We Now we want to find limiting reactant, excess reactant. What do we still need to figure out which one's which? Starts with a PR, product, and we're going to use PCL3. Now, what are we starting with here, guys? Grams. So we need to go to grams. So this is a mass to mass. Very seldom are you going to have the two intermediate ones. Moles to mass or mass to mole. You're either going to have mole to mole or mass to mass. So we're going to start with our phosphorus. This should say P4 here. 10543 grams of P4. How many conversion factors in a mass to mass? Three. Which one's always there? Mole ratio. Now, first, we want to get rid of grams of P4 and get to moles of P4. So what are we what units are grams per mole? Molar mass. What does P4 weigh per mole? What? 
Bree has 124. Each phosphorus weighs what? 31. 31, so that would be 124. Next, we got to get to moles of PCl3 from moles of P4. Ratio, please. 4 to 1. Then we got to get to grams, because that's where we need to get to, of PCL3 from moles. PCL3. What do we get? Use 35 and a half for chlorine. Close. What? Thirty-five and a half times three plus thirty-one. One thirty-seven point five. All right. What units cancel? All righty. How many grams of PCL4 or PCL3 did we make? Remember, multiply the tops together, hit enter, and then divide by the 124. 47. Let me see. Anybody else get a different number? Point four, yep, zero point, whoop, zero point, let's call it four seven. So that's our first one. Are we done yet? No. So we got to do it again. Chlorine. It's a grams a gram, how many conversions? All right, same thing, inverse molar mass of chlorine. What's the, whoop, what is the, what's chlorine weigh per mole? 35 and a half times two, don't use your calculator. What? 71, correct. Oh, come on. So this gets a 71. What is the ratio of potassium phosphorus trichloride to chlorine? Four to six. Can we simplify that? Two to three. And then we just multiply by the molar mass of PCL3, which we already know. Go through, do your canceling. And what do we get? This one's going to be a little more. I keep hearing little mumblings. Zero point two two nine eight if you want to go that far out. So which one is our limiting reactant? Chlorine is our limiting reactant. Oh, grams, you're right. Man. 
may have to give give Kennedy extra credit or something. All righty. Now, we got some more parts to this problem here. So we're moving to 2B. How many milligrams of PCL3 should we expect? Which number are we going to use from our first problem up here? So we're going to start with 0 0.2298 grams of PCL3 and we're going to convert it to milligrams of PCL3 so we want to get rid of our grams get to milligrams in one gram how many milligrams thousand how do you know that There's an easier way to find that out. It says it. <laughs> but milli is a thousand. You're correct. Millipede has more legs than a centipede. So, cancel out. And without a calculator, you should be able to do this. 229.8 milligrams. Because you move the decimal place... How many places? Three, because how many zeros did you have? Three. Three. And finally, coming up to part 2C. Now I forgot what they asked because I didn't write it down. Okay, how much are you going to have left over? Excess <laughs> left over. What was our excess? The phosphorus, correct? Yeah. All right, so this is what we started with with the phosphorus. But to figure out how much we got left over, we're going to figure out how much we use up. So we're going to take this, 1.78 grams of chlorine. That's our limiter. So how much phosphorus do we need if we start out with this amount of chlorine. So, it's a mass to mass. And I'm going to push through here. What's the moles ratio of phosphorus to chlorine? One to six? Yeah, let's fill this back in there. And then how many grams of P4 and a mole of P4? And what do we do? What's What's the molar mass of phosphorus for? 124. So, this, 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 this. Multiply your tops, divide by your bottoms. What do you get? 0 0.0518 grams of phosphorus. That's actually what we need. So how are we going to find out how much excess we got? This is what we need to make the reaction work. What do we start with? A phosphorus. We started out, nope, phosphorus. We started out with 0.105 
four, three grams. How much do we actually need? You just figured it out. One eight. So if somebody does the math, point oh five three. What? Six. Six. Close enough. This is your excess. It's left behind. And if you're doing this reaction, it's not good to have excess phosphorus left behind because if it catches on fire, it burns until it doesn't. <laughs> All right. So that's how you figure excess. Take your limiting, figure out how much you actually need. Once you figure out how much you actually need, subtract that from what you actually started with, and that will be your excess. So, try the next problem, and it's on, it's on the page, and then you got to flip it over to get the other one.